of my favorite topics, call to action buttons. Buttons that encourage people to take action, a specific action, to contact you, to purchase something from you, or to visit another page that they should read next. You can quickly get a sense of how useful this is for improving conversion rates, for making your entire photography website more effective overall. Let's quickly define what call to action buttons are. They're basically links pointing to other pages on your site or to some sort of functionality from your portfolio or e-commerce software. They're shaped like big buttons that stand out in some way through size, through color, through the wording you use in them. Only one main call to action button per page is recommended because you don't want to confuse people with too many options. They already have the website's navigation menu as a way to pick and choose where to navigate to themselves. And call to action buttons are usually positioned at the end of the page, after they've consumed the content and scrolled to the end. Longer pages, of course, can be broken down into different sections, each with its own call to action. Let's look at a few examples. An important distinction here is that call to action buttons need to be respectful with the visitor's browsing experience. They need to be passive. You're just encouraging people to go to a page. You're not forcing them. On the other hand, annoying pop-ups or splash pages are forcing users to take a specific action. Instead, Good call to action buttons just nudge users in the right direction. This is especially important for first time visitors to your site who are more, more prone to being confused by what you have to offer. But it's also useful for repeat visitors, for converting some of them into potential clients. And if this all sounds a bit too abstract, you can actually measure it. If you do a good job with your CTA buttons, you'll notice improvements in your Google Analytics reports. Bounce rates will be lower and your visitors' session duration will be longer. In turn, that translates to getting more results from the same amount of traffic you have, which is the definition of a higher conversion rate. The key is where to place those call to action buttons and what other pages on your site to link them to. Here's how you can deconstruct this. I like to think of it as creating a flow through your website, guiding people from point A to point B. Let's look at a few examples. They start off on your homepage, then they go to your portfolio, then they check out your services or pricing page. And finally, they go to your contact page to get in touch with you. Or again, starting from the home page, they read about your services, they check out your FAQ page, and then they go to contact you. Or maybe users start from the blog area, then they read about you and your work, check your pricing, and then go and book you for an event. Or maybe your goal is to have them subscribe to your newsletter, then that's the main action you want them to take in your blog area. Or again, considering back 
to the home page, maybe what you want them to do is to check out your portfolio, your image galleries, and from there to actually buy your images. That's a call to action button as well. Or maybe from your home page, they check out your photo tours and then subscribe to get updates when new tours are launched. The length of this flow depends on your service offering. If you do custom photo shoots, which depend on the client's specific request, so you need them to contact you first, most pages will have a CTA pointing to the contact page. If, however, you do explain all your different packages and services and prices on your website, you can first point people to those pages. And you can have multiple goals as well. Your blog pages take people to a newsletter subscribe page, while your bio and services pages take people to the contact page. You can have multiple entry points and multiple destinations. You need to think of all possible scenarios. Another way to look at it is to work your way back. You start by determining the final destination. What are the primary goals for your website? Maybe that's your contact page, or maybe you want people to purchase something from your shop or from your galleries. Then you determine the middle steps users need to take to get there. So before working with you or buying your prints, what do visitors need to know first? Maybe that's your prices. Maybe it's your bio to learn more about you. Or maybe a description of your photography services that you offer. Or an FAQ page as well. Or any other useful or relevant pieces of information on your website. Or good blog posts that you've written in the past. Then you determine the main entry points into your site. That's your home page for sure. And maybe some other popular pages or blog posts that you have. You can find the most popular ones in Google Analytics and in Google Search Console. Finally, you now link them all with CTA buttons. From all your site's entry points, to the relevant intermediary steps, and then to the, to the destination pages. If you take anything away from this lesson, it's to at least decide on a good call to action button for your homepage. It's useful to go through your entire website to do this, but your homepage is the most important one. Instead of letting users aimlessly browse through your content, and then choosing something from your navigation menu, why not point them to the next page they should check out first? Think about your goals. After seeing your homepage, should visitors head straight to the contact page to leave you a message? That's not often the right answer. Most people need to see more of your content first. Should they view a portfolio of your best images? Or should they learn more about what you have to offer on a services page? Or maybe they should dive into your photography blog. Maybe that's your thing. There's no magic formula. It all depends on your specific website structure and business goals. Mm -hmm.